1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York with Marvelous 3 and Freak of the Week off their Hey album. Good afternoon. It's Opie. It's Anthony. Hey. And it's Ralph Tatora. Hello, hello. How are you, Ralphie? I'm How doing you good. Doing? doing good. Doing good. Man, Anthony and I, uh, we got to work and the whole station's in a panic today. <laughs> What's go what, what what is this uh going on? Well here I am, I'm minding my own business. Yeah. I'm doing my radio show and all of a sudden the phones are going crazy. People are looking for Beatle tickets. Right. So uh your old radio station guys up there are pulling a practical joke on you, but the people weren't supposed to call until three. I oh. see. But of course, the anticipation of actually getting Beatle tickets, they called early to make sure they had the right number. So uh Oh wow, wait a minute. Wait, that's so, whack zany. Wait, so, so they went on the air basically. Our said, old radio station, and yeah. their and their April Fool's joke was that the Beatles are to getting call this number, which was the NEW request line. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can buy Beatle tickets after three o'clock because that's when you guys go on, and you would be inundated with these Beatle ticket requests phone calls. Oh, interesting. Oh, so that's why we can't uh, talk to our listeners today. Yes, yeah, the, the phone lines are all jammed up with uh, people from Boston that's calling us for Beatles tickets because our old station thought that would be a funny joke. Yeah. Say the mayor's dead or something. That's a funny joke. Yeah, yeah, that gets yeah. you thrown out of town. That's a joke with some balls to it. <laughs> what, are, what are they do? You know, all right. Uh, obviously, it's April 1st, April Fool's Day. You're not going to get any wacky, zany April Fool's gag out of uh, the Opie and Anthony show. No. Not, not like Stutter and John playing disco songs. And Whoa. Saying, Whoa. I, I shocked everyone. Whoa. Tonight. That was wild. Stutter and John, you're an embarrassment to the industry. <laughs> he went on the air for an hour, he's playing disco tunes, and he yeah. thought everyone would believe that K-Rock went disco today? Yeah, that would be the big uh, thing. Hey, John, that's gay. <laughs> if you're going to do a prank, do something, man. Pull it out. Put yeah. your job on the line like Aunt and I did a year ago. Right. Have, some, have some balls. Now, you guys obviously can't top that, so well, th well we're pretty calm today, I hope. Well, no. today we're going to have a little <laughs> retrospective. Oh, okay. Uh, we brought some audio clips, some fun audio clips of what uh, a real April Fool's prank is like. Not all the gay ones you're hearing all over town today. Ones where people believe you and it upsets uh, uh, an entire city. Entire city. We got the news clips when we got fired. It's going to be a pretty wild show today. We'll have some fun with this one. But uh, first, got to take care of business now. Yeah, so our, our old station, who, uh, when, when, uh, it, you know, when the heat was turned up, really turned their back on Anthony and I and, and let us fry... Um, now they're you know, they're trying to get back at us, and they're saying the Beatles are reunion uh, are uh, yeah, re reunion concert, Shea reuniting, and, and Julian Lennon with the other three, yada yada yada. Call at three o'clock, and our phones are all jammed up. So all right, listen, let's let's show our cute little old station that didn't support us when uh, the going got tough. Um, how much power we have here in New York now? <laughs> you gonna jam their lines? Yeah, I let's almost, do it. I almost cursed. Yeah, I got all the special phone numbers of our old radio station. Oh, yeah, so you guys, so you guys, you can't, um, you can't talk to us today because because our phone lines are jammed with our old station uh, pulling the stupid prank. Looking for Beatle tickets. So if you're a faithful listener of the show and you you have enjoyed the antics, you've enjoyed the Tuesday Night Hummer Club, you really like the new one we started yesterday, uh, Whip 'Em Out Wednesday. We've made you laugh. We've made your ride a little easier on the way home. I need you guys to uh, call the following numbers. A little audience participation. And I need you to call it over and over, over and, and over. over and over again. I'm looking for rich guys that don't, you know, don't mind you know, getting a large, uh, long-distance bill. Show this little Massachusetts uh, station what uh, New York is like. Right. You know, we've gotten a few phone calls. It's very cute. Pound them with the power of the biggest city, the pinnacle of the free world, New York. Yeah. And as for Dave Douglas, our old boss that yeah. like turned his back on us and, and got scared and let us fry and let us get fired. Where, right. Where Anthony and I didn't know, you know, what was going to happen with our careers for two or three months. Yeah. Dave Douglas. As for Dave Douglas, I'm going to give these numbers out and I'm serious. You guys, please do Just us a favor them. today. All right. 617-236-1073. That's the business line. Now get a pen. Make sure you write this down. Get anything. Scratch it into a paper with your fingernail if you're uh, near, if you don't have a pen near you. 617-236-1073. So that's going to wreck their whole business because that's the main line. And then call their uh, their request line over and over again. Tell them Opie and Anthony said go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. F them. Yeah. 617 617-931-1. A A F. That's a request line. Just pound them and pound them for the next few days, not just for the next hour or two. Yeah. We're going to show them the power of uh, WNEW in New York City. If you miss those numbers, get a pen. Six one seven two three six 
one zero seven three. The business line. Ask for Dave Douglas. Call him Dave Dickless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call him that, and, and say, hey, Dave, I'm glad that you uh, didn't support Opie and Anthony because now we have them in New York. What an ass. Throwing some random curses, that's always fun. Yeah, he loves that. <laughs> uh, and also the request line, 617-931-1AAF. Pound them. I'm going to get the uh, the private studio line where all the rock stars call. Yeah, we'll get the hotline number. I'm going to have that soon, too. We'll give you the hotline number. Call up and make believe you're like a celebrity. Yeah. You know, and call up and uh, just, just pound them. <laughs> we'll give this out all day if you missed it this time. But the people that have it, um, start now. Just keep pounding them. Over and over again. Because you won't be able to call us, really. Cause, uh, no, the lines are just full of I mean, of, over and over garbage. again. Watch this. Hi, N-E-W. N-E-W. Hello. Hello. Phone's working. Yeah, they're working. That'd be a treat. Hi, N-E-W. N-E-W. Are, are they working? I hear, like, talking in the background. Uh, tell, Rick not to, tell Rick not to hang the phone. up. Hang up outside. Hi, N-E-W. All right. All right. At least they work. Now they're now. working again. Hi, N-E-W. Hi, N-E-W. I was asking about the uh, Beatles tickets. Beatles tickets. That's Sorry, ridiculous. No. Dude, that's Ozone playing a joke on you from up in Massachusetts. This is Opie and Anthony. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, they are. They said they had Beatles tickets. I fear it was an April Fool's thing. I just wanted to see if it was true or not. Yeah, what a wacky April Fool's joke. Yeah, huh? boy. Funny. How about saying the mayor's dead? Now, that's a good joke. <laughs> All right. See you later. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Hi, N-E-W. Yes, I'm calling about tickets. For what? For the what? Beatles? The Beatles? Is that a... Uh... Dude, come Dude, on. Do you honestly think the Beatles are getting back together? Uh, I don't know. What are they saying on all these radio stations? Do you have all a... these radio stations? No, you just heard from one station. Oh, what's the one station? This is Opie and Anthony. Who's that? Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. From, from they w do forget w. quickly, Who's don't they? Line? <laughs> so this is an April Fool's joke? Yeah, yeah it's an April Fool's joke. Yeah. Okay. All right, later. Yeah. Uh, anybody interested in a Beatles reunion? Hi, N-E-W. Yeah, hey, hey, why don't you guys uh, give us the uh, fax number up there? Oh, yeah. What oh, the, is fax the fax number. number. It's uh, the same. It's uh, 1073, but 931. Okay, hold on. Uh, Here's the fax number. Now, the fax number? Yeah. And you guys know how to destroy fax machines, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a yeah. bunch of people that know. I'm serious. Yeah. You, you loop like a, a black what? A black piece of paper, and paper it up, yeah. throw it, and just, yeah, it keeps going around and around. Who's okay. Who's this, Anthony? Yeah, uh, Opie and Anthony. All right, the fax line is 617-931-1073. <laughs> One, oh. Yo, I'm going to you guys up, man. I'm serious. Just pound them. Pound them with, like, curses and whatever you could come up with. All right, let's get them all straight. And, and make fun of them because, like, you know, because they didn't support us and, and, and we were fired and stuff. Yeah. We went to New York. We built our uh, a, a brand new audience, and they're, and they're pretty much sucking wind now, so make yeah. fun of them. Yeah, they're, they're, definitely, they're definitely jealous now. All right, let's get it straight. F <laughs> write, write this down. Fax number 617-931-1073. You guys got it. Do me a favor. Say what's up to uh, everybody from Hachette. All right. Well, you just did. Thanks, Thanks, man. Bye, All right, man. Hi, N-E-W. Hey, how you guys doing? All right, what's, what's up? up? I just wanted to know that I tried those numbers yeah. and jammed. You can't get through. Thank you. Hey, okay. you guys rock. I'll, I'll keep trying. Yeah, over and over again. If you keep enjoyed all the pictures on the website that we put up the last oh, yeah, month. Listen, I got the whole weekend. <laughs> all right, because you can even, because after 5.30 when uh, the office closes, then there's uh, all sorts of voicemails you can get into. Yeah. Oh, well, we can leave lots of voicemails. Yeah, oh, that, we'll, we'll do that. We'll give you the names and everything. Yeah, well, just, just Dave right. Douglas. Dave, Dave Dickless. Dickless. Dave Dickless, who and didn't support Boston. us. Sucks. There you go. There you go. All Take right. Take care. Bye. Hi, N-E-W. Yes, how you doing? Looking for Opie and Anthony? Right here, what's, what's up? up? Yeah, I got a good one for you guys. Yeah, what? You ever get a? You ever get one of those fax machines that keeps dialing back to you? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So all you got to do is have people start faxing to the regular voice line. Okay. And it keeps and it keeps faxing over and over and over again. Well, whatever anybody can figure out with the uh, the ways to uh, have fun with fax machines, keep them just rolling so they run out of paper all night, <laughs> or whatever. Just yeah, just if, do that. Because if you have a voice line and people use the fax machines that automatically redial, because right. if it fails, it sends again and again. Right. If you ever get a fax machine that calls your home phone number or something, it's all right. very painful. All right, cool. Then then this get to work. Fun. Well, yeah. do. All right, right, man. Man. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye. Mm -hmm. Hi, N-E-W. Hey. Hey, what's up? Hey, how you doing? No, Opie and Anthony, what's up? Hey, it's Rick. Uh, listen, I just, I mean, I really jammed up that fax machine. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's a, 
if you can really uh, even get anything else through. All right, cool. I appreciate it. Very good, the, man. My dialer is 100. Oh, right. So it redials 100, <laughs> 100 times. And it won't disconnect. If, it, if, if it's calling the same number, it won't disconnect until the, with the 100th. And all I feed in is, like you said, it's just a black paper. Let her rip, man. Yeah, Let her so. rip. <laughs> it's like solid busy, and I, uh, I got through on it. So. Oh, cool, man. You rule. Thank uh, you. Hey, you guys rule, man. Thanks all right. a lot. Bye. Bye. We'll teach them. They want to play Massachusetts. a little. Massachusetts think they're... Uh, Think they're gonna uh, win in a battle with New York? Yeah, in Jersey, please. In Connecticut. I mean, we have a lot of faithful listeners up there, but this is just you know, if they want to play a little April Fool's gag, they're they're yeah, talking to the, one. they're talking to the kings of April Fool's pranks. They threw us out of that piss ant city. Right. Don't screw with us. Don't f with me, boys. <laughs> this isn't my first time at the rodeo. Oh, you guys can hit their website too. Where, you know, every single person that works there gets, you know, thousands of junk email. Yeah. That'd, that'd be cool. Cool, too. Yeah. Just go to their website, waf.com. All right? Yeah. Pound them. <laughs> That's all we want. Hi, N-E-W. Sorry, the little gag for the day. Isn't it cute? Hi, N-E-W. <laughs> Poor Ralph couldn't do a radio show today. I know. But I feel like Boris Karloff here. I've created a monster. Oh, no. <laughs> Hi, N-E-W. I hope you're an Anthony. Yeah, hey. what's up? Hey, I'm calling from Boston. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, uh, we miss you here. First well, of all, well, we miss you guys too, but we got a we oh. got a battle we're we're in right now. Yeah, a little bit. So what's um, up? Uh, did you hear what's going on at the AF today? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's a wacky little uh, April Fool's prank they got going yeah. on, huh? Not no, good. Too bad. Uh, I don't know. Not as good as the one last year. Duh. <laughs> 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 hey, you guys doing anything today for that? Well, no. The boss got really scared, and uh, and we promised him. We rarely <laughs> promise anyone in management that we'll be good, but we we promised him that we would uh, keep it cool today. You should oh, have cool. seen Gary. Just he, oh, I think he crapped his pants when I said that we wanted to do some kind of a gag, like uh, the Serbians launched a, a tactical nuclear weapon over oh. American troops. He <laughs> cracked. He a load came out of his leg of his pants. <laughs> he was so. So we decided against that one. Yeah. I mean, we, we weren't going to do that. Well, good. well, say every, uh, say hi to everyone up there for us. All right, I'm thinking about moving down there so I can listen to you guys. Yeah, right, come yeah. on down. Join the party, man. <laughs> right on, man. See you later. All right. That's cool. All right. We've uh, we've started. Yeah. Now, we're going to do a little retrospective on uh, what a real, honest-to-goodness April Fool's gag is. Yeah. You know, it was painful. I mean, by now, if you listen to our show, uh, the only reason we're in New York is because we told Boston that uh, the mayor died in a car accident last April 1st. We were uh, the number one uh, show in Boston. Mm -hmm. We were huger than huge. We, we thought felt we were very good about ourselves, didn't we? Yeah, okay. we thought we were untouchable, and we decided to, you know, play an April Fool's prank that people would never forget. Because we, we just think when uh, radio guys go on the air and, and do a stupid little, you know, April Fool's it's prank. It's lame. It's embarrassing, like stuttering John playing the disco songs today. Ooh. It's, it's just gay. It's stupid. So we, uh... There's a meteor. If you look out your window at exactly uh, 3.30, you'll see a giant meteor. Right. And then after 3.30, April Fool's! <laughs> ho, 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 ho! <laughs> Like, come on. So we went on the air and uh, let's give him a real one. Yeah, that's what we said. We, we went on, said the mayor of Boston was dead. And uh, people bought it. Yeah. And, and it honest, turned the city upside down. And Anthony and I listened to the show for the first time because this thing has been written about for the last year. Uh, news clips. It was a national story. Yeah. And it's kind of painful to listen to. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but uh, we're going to do that for you guys today because it's really interesting. And also we got some of the... Uh, some of the TV news clips we're going to play for you. Anchorman chastising us. Just hating funny. us. So stick around. We got lots to do today. We'll even play a couple songs. <laughs> that? There's a novelty. <laughs> totally my idea, man. Dave had nobody else had anything to do with it. It was my idea, and you know it was always fun. What, what idea? What's that? What, what idea? What idea? Well, to say Beatles tickets go on sale at three o'clock at that number. Oh. At wow. your number. Yeah. All right. So. So uh, what? The business lines all tied up over there. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... Hey, we're the guys that said the mayor's dead. Of course we're going to go one step too far. Yeah, but you must get a kick out of it when the Boston people started calling and you were realizing, hey, it's Opie and Anthony. That must have been pretty cool. Yeah, it was all right. So, yeah. So is uh, Dave all pissed off and stuff? Oh, dude, he's... It's, it's, a, it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> he may, I had to call you to tell you to stop giving out the... He makes, he's making me call to tell you to stop giving out the business line. So you just like uh, he called to say, stop saying the mayor's dead. Yeah, we'll get right on it. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want us to give uh, the number out anymore? Well, give the studio line, but don't give the...
the business line. I mean, we got to make some money, you know. Well, the business line is what? 617-236-1073? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want us giving that out anymore, right? Dude, don't put this on the air. <laughs> <laughs> don't put this on the air, man. Say hi to New York, Ozo. <laughs> <laughs> Probably all my old homeboys are listening to <laughs> Ozone, well, everyone. Someone we used to work with in uh, Boston. What, are we live now? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I could have swore. Damn, I should have. That's all right. We got a delay now. We got a, we got a huge delay. <laughs> yeah, we're like delayed an hour to so, make us uh, So, Ozone, we, we won't give out 617 I'm going to get your business number. We'll give it out up here. And we'll have a, we'll have a battle. We'll see who more people listen to. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, oh. Hey, good, good talking to you guys, yeah, man. Definitely. And I, hey, happy anniversary! We, we just want to say happy anniversary, and we still think about you up here. We miss you. We appreciate yeah. that. And you should be up here. I just want everyone to know that. Well, we got this whole. Uh, we we talked about this the other day. It's like you know, you guys are like our old girlfriend, and the sex was really good. But now we have like a a, a new girlfriend, and she's cool too. <laughs> <laughs> so we're kind of hoping someday to have like a threesome. <laughs> Anthony and Opie were saying how much they like corn and uh, Rob Zombie, and, yeah. I, and I know you know I don't know if you're allowed to play that over there. No, we um, got we, we got we got in trouble for playing Rob Zombie last week and, and Godsmack. And Godsmack. Well, he is the devil man, so I can see why you get in trouble. <laughs> he know. is the devil man, yes. <laughs> All right, well, hey, it's good being on New York. If my mom or my sister is listening, you know, it's good to, good to talk to y'all. All right, and, and I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, Ozone. Cool, John. All right, bye, John Osterlin. There was, you go. He was one of the cool ones up there. Yeah, we like John. All right. Yeah, so 617-236-1073. <laughs> don't, uh, don't call that that's, anymore. That's really not a good number to call oh, anymore. Oh, yeah. They, they'll really get upset if that keeps getting called. Yeah, so, but, uh, but the 617-931-1AAF, that's still good, right? Yeah. And the fax line, 617-931-1073. Yeah, yeah. But definitely don't call 617-236-1073. Yeah, that's a bad thing. That would just be horrible. <laughs> They effed with the wrong people, you know. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, Days of the New, and the downtown ACDC before that. It's Opie and Anthony. Hey. Uh, we got a request for Stranglehold. We'll do that next, so stay right there, okay? Yes. What do you got, man? Did you see the uh, HBO show last night? The um, stripper show? I, I sort of <sighs> saw it. I was so tired, though. I know I was really tired last night because I, I saw like the first five minutes. Yeah. And then I just went to bed. Let me tell you how good this was. I was on the computer playing Half-Life. Mm -hmm. It came on. I shut the computer off. <laughs> Sat on the couch. Watched the show. Yeah. What well, didn't even need any uh, prompting. No. Uh, they, they followed a few strippers. Um, girls that were just auditioning in a new strip club. Brand new to the biz. And they have to go before these... Uh, strip club owners and dance and they're all embarrassed and everything then they had the uh, headliner girls the girls that are in porno movies magazines and what they do they have to travel all over the country sensitive moment one of the girls um starts crying in her hotel room because she's so lonely on the road Jeez. then they show the next scene scene she's smiling grinding rug act yeah. dollar bills just flying all over the place but she wasn't too happy with her uh, breast implants uh, and uh, she was getting some fat on her hips. They showed the procedure, her getting new implants put in and lipo suction on her hips and butt. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Sick what? They cut. They lay it down on this table. She's just obviously totally naked. Uh, put all that goop on her, the antibacterial stuff. Then they cut around her nips and pop them up like flip top, like a can. <sighs> Whoop. And then the doctor, you, you know, you always think of surgery, surgery as being this delicate thing. Right. He's just roughhousing, pulling these, <laughs> these bags out. It looked like a volcano. <laughs> they were all pushed up in a cone. Yeah. And he's tugging, and they're coming right out of the hole that the, the nip was there. So he just pulled out the old implants. Old implants. Then they showed inside after the implants were taken out. Yeah. It's just this big hollow mess. Ugh. I was, yeah, I was skeeving. Yeah. Skeeving. So how did they get the new ones in? They shove them right through the nip hole. And the doctor's like packing it in like you're, I don't know, like you'd pack anything else in. Now, I saw that on the Operation Channel one, one time. Did you? Now, the bags aren't filled, right? They put the bags no, in No, they first. were filled. Oh, see, that's another procedure. They were filled, and he was shoving them through the nip hole. Wow. Just like pushing and twisting. Then he had his whole hand in there because mm -hmm. he's smoothing it out. And he's just like, like rubbing around inside. And how big was her nipple? It was uh, 
a little bigger than normal size. He was fisting her nipple? Fisting. <laughs> yes. I, I guess it stretched. You know, the skin around it. Can we get... Then she's lipoed like they're just putting this big tube in. And <laughs> Can we get in trouble for saying fisting her nipple? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I, so I don't check know. myself. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> it's a surgical procedure. Yeah. Fisting of the nipple. Well, I saw that on the operation channel once, and it was interesting. They put the bags in first. Yeah. And then uh, the girl was completely flat, and they, they raised the operation table to a, like a 45-degree angle. Yeah. And then he starts filling up the uh, the bags <sighs> with the, uh, what do they use now? Not silicone. The, uh, saline. Uh, saline, thanks. Whoa. Saline. And, and he's like, he's looking from a distance like, no, we could go a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger. And then he's like adjusting them and stuff oh, and, like, and feeling the girl up. And it's like at the gas station. Okay, fill it up. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my gauge. A uh, little out. <laughs> <laughs> Pump it up. That's how it was, though. <laughs> No, this was a full one. Maybe maybe because uh, she had already had implants in. Yeah. There was already a big hollow space for the new one. Okay. Maybe when you uh, put a new one in, you have to fill it up to make the hollow space. I don't know. It was a good show, huh? Yeah, it was good. And then at the end, they showed this... Uh, the veterans, they call them. Oof. The women that have been in it for a while. Eee. And they had one woman that was just bitter as hell. She's working one night a week at this club. Uh, they showed her dance, and her butt is just like chewed bubble gum. Uh, her droopy boobs. She just looks old. She's not proportioned right. I mean, uh, it's one thing to age, and then it's one thing to be a dancer when you're aging, because obviously it's a, a market for, for young girls. Mm -hmm. Guys are going in there to see young girls, you know? So she's all upset, and she's belligerent with the, some of the owners. She's just like, well, it's because I'm too old, right? She was like being all, like, just raggy with these guys. And they're trying to be nice to her. They're like, well, you know, this is, you're a little old for the club. What we want is uh, the younger girls. Oh, you want perfection, huh? She's like, no, not perfection, but, you know, young meat. So the guys come, that's what they're paying for. Right. Not to see your mom <laughs> up on stage. You want to see the fantasy girls. Where do they go? They she was just, just fade away. Yeah, last thing uh, they 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 had one of the club owners going. I wish I could put money, you know, have a, a home, for, a rest home for old <laughs> strippers. He goes, but it just doesn't happen that way. I smell bit. <laughs> yeah, the stripper rest home. Imagine that one. That could be pretty funny. Yeah, baby. And then uh, they showed her walking out of a club that she's trying to get a. a she tried auditioning for. She didn't make it, and then she starts crying. Ugh. You know, it's so hot. I feel like I'm 90 years old. <laughs> It's like, you were making a nice dime back in the day, I bet, honey. Even Michael Jordan had to retire. She tucked some away. Yeah. You know? Uh, I kind of felt bad for then. But, uh, yeah, then they showed some other ones. Uh, one woman was 50 years old, and she's still dancing. She didn't look She didn't look as bad as the other one. But you could tell. It's like, oh, I hope she's got money put away because yeah. she doesn't have another year left. Interesting. This is a great show on HBO. My H favorite channel so H far. Well, HBO has made a, a major comeback in the last yeah. few years. Well, they're showing the uh, the sex stuff late at night. They Real got sex. The Sopranos, Sopranos are on, Sopranos. which is uh, by far my favorite show. Taxi Cab Confessions. That's a good one. The show on the hookers was great. Yeah. Where they had the audio of the, the girls going down on the guys. Oh. That was ins it was insane, though. And they show everything yeah. on HBO. So. Like, you turn it around, it's like... This is the, the channel that plays Babar the Baby Elephant in the morning? <laughs> All right, Anthony. Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner, is now available to you. Yes, if you need an energy boost, within 45 minutes of taking Stacker 2, you will feel its effects. You will feel a burst of energy. And, like Opie said, the world's fastest, uh, uh, strongest fat burner. Yeah, you could use the same fat burning, lean muscle building agents used by professional models and bodybuilders. Ah. That's why they call it the world's strongest fat burner. Stacker 2, it also gives you a great energy boost. I've been uh, trying this stuff off and on, and it definitely helps me out. It's like drinking a few cups of coffee. Really? Yeah. Cool. Like, uh, uh, like... Yeah, like three or four cups of coffee. That burst of energy. It helps. Um, the company's located in Jersey, so you can get the stuff in 48 hours. All you have to do is give them a call for Stacker 2. Call 1-800-LIGHTLINE. That's 1-800-L-I-T-E-LINE today. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York. Sorry about that. I was distracted. I'm, I'm reading the instant feedback from everyone. Yeah. Looks like WOW is a huge success. Yeah, yesterday. I was looking at that. Great. Well, next week. Next week. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, Ted Nugent, Stranglehold. It's Opie and Anthony. Hey, man. Thanks for checking us out today. We definitely appreciate it on this um, April Fool's. 
April Fool's Day. <laughs> ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Do you want to hear some of this today? Yeah, this is uh well, we're we're not gonna do some stupid April Fool's joke today. No, because so we, we figure we'd uh, do a little retrospective on uh, last year's debacle. Yeah, we can't top last year, and no. and this is the reason we we are in New York. Yep. Um, so yeah, we'd figure we'd play some of the audio from the show that got us fired. It's sort of a slow burn, isn't it? It it kind of uh, we start off with this just uh, passing comment. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the mayor of Boston being dead. Yeah. And it uh, turns into things where we have a newscaster from Florida where the accident supposedly happened calling us and uh, listeners calling up. And uh, it just spins out of control. The, the amazing thing about the prank last year, um, the listeners got it right away and helped us along with our prank. Yeah. All of a sudden they start calling in with info about the, the tragic accident that happened in Florida with the... Mayor of Boston. Yeah. So, um, well, uh, I'll, I'll play this here. How it started. This was How it the started. first inkling. Yeah, where we just kind of quickly teased it to just pique everyone's interest. All right. And then after that, uh, there's a pretty good bit on here. So I said, screw it. Let's let it just roll through today. Okay. It's uh, They call my name's Bill. Um, calling a pharmacy or a doctor about uh, taking too much Viagra. All right. So Viagra, very new last year. Yeah, so you'll hear the quick tease that's, that started the nightmare last year for us, and then a, a pretty cool bit. 102.7 WNEW, the Rock of New York. Nirvana, come as you are, unplugged. And Van Halen before that. It's Opie, it's Anthony, and it's the big boss. Hey, Scott Herman stopping by. You leaving for the day? Hey, I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah? Are you? So we could start our April uh, Fool's prank. Oh, yeah. So we leave the building. I'll be listening in the car. <laughs> did you hear? Did you hear oh, what? My I... car phone with the with the hotline dialed up. <laughs> did you hear what uh, I said to Gary? And he that? he almost had a, a heart attack. So we were going to get on the air as an April Fool's prank and say that the uh, Serbians launched a tactical nuke against our troops. And uh, <laughs> he was just like, Oh no, <laughs> no. no. No, we won't do that. Don't worry. No, we're... you know I really I trusted you when you said you wouldn't do anything. That's and we will win your trust. Yeah, and like, and like all morning, people are coming over to me. What are they I think the do? boys met what they said yesterday that they wouldn't cause any trouble today. Well, our whole deal is we gotta you know earn the trust, and then we disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not as fun when you disappoint when you don't have the trust. Yeah, yeah. So people don't understand. You have 260 days a year to disappoint. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is a marathon. You don't have to disappoint in one day. No. We're... Also, also, we listened to the uh, the tapes of last year's fiasco at the other station, and uh, it would be hard to pull that off again. Yeah. And yeah. You, you've never publicly apologized to the mayor of Boston, have you? Yes, we did. Oh, we, we did, did on on some of the one of the newscasts, but it looked so insincere. We were looking before at some of the newscasts. Well, it was. They too. made you do that, right? Uh, no. Well, they, the bosses well. kind of said it would be best if if you apologized. Yeah. Uh, we weren't supposed to talk to any news crews, but as we were walking to the elevator, they like came out of the woodwork. And the cameras are right there in our face. So they said, anything you want to say to the mayor, you hurt his family with this. So we were trying to just say, hey, if we hurt the mayor's family, we apologize. Uh, uh, it was a joke. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, Sammy Hagar from Red Voodoo. That's Mas Tequila. And we were talking about Sammy Hagar yesterday. It looks like he's uh, extending the olive branch to Van Halen. Yeah. He does want it. What, what's the story? Ralph knows better than us. Ralph's like the music uh, the guy. The music right guy. Now. The music guru. What's the deal what, with what Sammy Hagar and Van songs? Halen? What do you need to know? <laughs> what's the deal? Sammy, was, like you said, he was offering an olive branch to the other guys. He's, he's sick and tired of uh, them bashing him and him bashing back. And he's just, well, you know, they were, it were, they were great years. He doesn't want to have to, you know, say nasty things about the time he was with Van Halen. And uh, he kind of misses the guys, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think he sees a good opportunity because uh, Van Halen's album tanked. The last yeah, one. but they're working on uh, number three, too. Well, they're in the studio right now with uh, Gary Sharon oh. working on the second album. Oof. They're in, in Eddie's studio, 5150. Yeah. Eddie so, must be drinking again. It's a waste of time. <laughs> Whatever, but they're, yeah, they're back at it. Okay. Yeah. And Sammy's got Red Voodoo out. I hear yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. He just doesn't want to bash anymore. Hey, simple as this. Sammy Hagar goes back to Van Halen within the year. Thank That's you. That's your prediction. Oh, without a doubt. They both need each other. Mm -hmm. You'll see. We're talking about like a, a millennium. 
big concert thing? Millennium could be cool. I could start yeah. it off. Yeah. 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 It's going to happen. You you watch. I hope you're right. All right. Ralph Tutor, everyone. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, I know. Ralph Tutor, everyone. Noon to thank you. Studio noon. audience applaud. Yeah, noon to three. <laughs> All right. Uh, tomorrow's the last day to get your votes in for the girls that are on our website right now. Ooh, yeah, it's already Thursday. Uh, one of the four girls that you guys have been checking out on our website uh, through the semi-live studio cam of the WNEW website. Mm -hmm. um, tomorrow is the final day to vote, and then yeah. we're going to announce who will be taking on Tara as the hottest girl to ever take her clothes off on the Opie and Anthony show. Yeah. This contest becoming huge because Priceline.com has jumped aboard, and they're going to give a trip to the winner. Isn't this something? That's huge. Yeah. I think more girls are going to be coming out of the woodwork in the coming months. So, Hey, a lot of people said they can't get on the website because it keeps saying uh, error, mm -hmm. because uh, the too much traffic. When you get that, just keep hitting refresh. Just sit there and go, dink, 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 refresh. It pops up. You get in. Okay. you got to fight to get in. Well, 83,000 people have voted. Whew. 83,000 people. I got the latest vote count right here. That's insane. That's insane. And we'll announce the winner tomorrow. So that's why they're having a trouble there a, on the website. Now, do you have any breakdowns? Uh, yeah. Is there a, well, I don't want to say anything, but is there a, a, a runaway uh, first place? I'm not even going to comment on that, Anthony. Let me say, I'm not going to comment on it. I just want to say. All right. Oh. Hmm. You've got to let the suspense build. Until tomorrow, okay. we'll, anou we'll announce that. All right. All right. You want to play some more audio from our uh, April Fool's prank last year? Yes, one year ago today, uh, we were fired from our last job in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, we got the job here. We're back home. Yes. New York, where we were born and bred. We're finally happy to be back in New York. At first, it was a rough start, and we didn't think... Uh, Anyone who was really digging us, <laughs> we'd go to the phones day after day, and people yeah. wanted us dead, basically. But it seems like the tide is changing. Yes. We feel like we're building a little Opie and Anthony army. Yeah, we appreciate that. And uh, we're, we decided to look back on uh, what got us here. People actually thought we uh, said the mayor was dead and got fired on purpose. Mm -hmm. There was a conspiracy theory that we did it on purpose to indeed get back home to New York. Correct. And work in New York, but uh, we're far too stupid to do something that <laughs> smart. Believe me. And we said in the papers many times, if we were going to uh, get fired on purpose, we yeah. would have came up with something much better than than this. We truly didn't think we were going to get fired for this one. No. You know, but uh, ooh, we did. <laughs> so a year ago, we're on the air, and Ant and I, just before the show, you know, that morning, we decided we were going to say that uh, the mayor of Boston died in a car accident. Sick, tasteless, yes, but uh, with all the stupid jocks putting out all these retarded uh, April Fool's gags on all the other stations, it's so stupid. They're the same ones every year. No one's ever fooled. We figured we'd just go for broke. Right. Let's go for a big one. Right. And uh, we said the mayor of Boston was dead. Now, when we were in the studio um, last year, we still didn't think we were going to do the prank. We really weren't sure. We were just getting our, our, our confidence up. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this phone call comes in, this stupid lady out of nowhere, is calling us, thinking she got another radio station. Yeah. And that's when we finally broke our April Fool's prank. Yeah. Check this out. <laughs> man. <laughs> you were really bitter back then, man. Yeah, you could You hear were it. worse than you are now. You can hear it in my voice. I do. Like, like <laughs> she's calling. You're just calling her a friggin' slob. And I'll, I'm sitting there like, why is he so angry with this woman? <laughs> <laughs> but that's how we broke the prank. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I got a quick clip. The lady called back. Yes, she did. Hey, yeah. Hello, who's this? What can I do for you? Who is this? Who is this? Oh, my name is Mary. What can I do for you? Well, uh, who is this? This is Jim. Jim who? It's just Jim. Why? Uh, because I want to know who you are. I want to know where you're where you working. Huh? Where are you working, Jim? R RKO, what's up? Oh, really? Yeah. I don't think so. Whatever. What can I do for you? Nothing. Thank you. Slob. <laughs> I don't know, man. You had a bug up your ass a year ago. <laughs> I'm a lot happier now. Trust me. Man. We are back home. So that's how it started. Yep. Um, it, it just snowballs from here. Well, because um, our listeners really got our show. Like, yeah. they're starting to get down here in New York. Mm -hmm. And so now um, 
the listeners started calling to help us out with our pranks, saying that you know they had the latest info from yeah. another station. And we're going to play a little of that uh, next time we talk. It's, okay. It, it, it gets much better, trust me. And then later on, we'll also have the news footage. Yeah. Uh, we'll have clips of the news that was on, because it was on every news station, of the mayor. and uh, Yeah. It, it gets really interesting. <laughs> well, coming up also, we, um, we, we staged a reporter giving us all the details. Yes. On the mayor's... Uh, Car crash. The reporter never got in trouble. No. And he is a, a professional jock. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. And right now he's panicking. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, Alice Cooper. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. We haven't played that one in a while, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Also in there, Creed and Pink Floyd 2. It's Opie and Anthony. Thanks for uh, taking the drive home with us once again today. Happy, happy April Fool's Day to you. <laughs> no wacky stunts going on here on the uh, Opie and Anthony show. Yeah. Kind of, uh, once you, you, know, you shoot the load uh, the year before, what are you going to do? How much? We can't beat what we did last year, so we're just going to... And, and hold our job. Believe, yeah. me, believe me, we could beat it, <laughs> but we kind of want to stay here. Yeah, a bunch of people calling us pussies because we didn't come up with uh, an April Fool's prank this year, but you no. know what? We can't beat last year, or we'd get fired again, and we kind of want to stay here for a while. Yeah, we were going to do a whole thing on the uh, Yugoslavian nuclear attack, mm. but uh, then we just figured, hey, kind of want to keep this job. Yeah, so thanks for bearing with us today, because it's a, it's a very <laughs> emotional anniversary for us. Yes, yes, it is. Oh, I'm tearing <laughs> up. All right. Well, I got some more audio from last year's prank. Okay. I think if you're a fan of, the, uh, of this radio show, it's kind of interesting to you to see uh, why we are where we are today. Yeah. All right. So a little while ago, uh, we played the, 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 the tape of us actually finally saying that the mayor of Boston died in a car accident. Right. All right. And now um, the phone started going nuts with listeners. Yeah. So here we go. What's up, buddy? Hey, what happened to Menino? I was about to take it out. My coworker said he's dead. Uh, yeah, he was in a car accident in Florida. He was, no. on, he was on his way back to the uh, airport to come back to Boston. He was in a head-on collision. No kid. Yeah, all the details are sketchy, but it's going to be on the news at 6, I guess. Oh, no kid, huh? Yeah. Well, hey, thanks, thanks for telling me, man. That's pretty freaky, huh? Isn't that something? Jesus Christ. All right, man. Have a good one. Thank you. Hey, F, who's this? Hey, how you doing? It's Sandy. What's up, Andy? I got some news. My parents just came back from Florida, and they said they uh, drove by the accident site where Mayor Menino got killed in. Yeah. They said uh, 95 was closed for the longest time. I guess uh, 18-wheeler hit a bridge abutment. The bridge collapsed, and it collapsed on top of Mayor Menino's car. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, yeah, the details are slowly but surely coming in, but... So, I mean, more bad news for... Boston listeners. Freaking tragic, bro. What is the city going to do? I have no idea. All right. Well, thanks a lot for the info. If you, if you find anything else out, please let us know because we, hey. don't, we don't have any uh, access to news right at this moment. Do the best I can for you, brother. Thanks, buddy. You got it. All right. <laughs> See, this started adding to the realism of it. See, our listeners got us in trouble. They're the ones yeah, that started calling it. in with uh, details. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> See, that, that's what it was, too. It was... Uh, us saying it was one thing, but then we had the listeners chiming in and, and reports. And it, just, it just spun out of control. Yeah. And we weren't stopping. No. That was another thing. I think if we would have stopped earlier and gone on the air and said it was a joke, um, we'd have had a, a leg to stand on when they went to fire us. But we kept this going right up until the end. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, when well, we paid. <laughs> well, we have some more audio clips here. All right. Oh, man. Busy. Oh, man. Busy. Oh, man. Busy. Oh, man. Busy. That's a good one. That's a great one, right? <laughs> and busy, busy day, actually. I'm just not looking forward to uh, going home, and the TV is going to be taken up now 24 hours a day with the uh, Menino story. Uh, <laughs> you're you going to have to look at his history, uh, rise to mayor, and uh, please. I'm tired of it. AF! Hey, my brother just woke me up and said the mayor of Boston is dead? Yeah. He said he got struck by lightning or something like that? No, that's... Uh, there's so many stories going around. No, he was in a traffic accident in Florida on his way to the airport to come back to Boston. He was vacationing down there. Really? Yeah, 995. With something to do with a bridge and a tractor trailer, but, uh... Yeah, you know. did, the, did lightning hit the bridge? I, I didn't hear that part of the story yet. Oh. You know, when a big story like this breaks, a lot of weird uh, facts come in. He's really dead? Yeah, head-on collision. Wow. All right, bro. All right, man. Thanks. I guess we'll find out more soon. Yeah. 
Mm. There you have it. Oh, Crazy Jim's on the hotline. Crazy Jim. Crazy Jim! Hey, what's going on? What do you got today, bro? Hey, listen, I'm uh, driving around and listening to the radio, and they're reporting that Man Renito died. You guys heard anything yeah, about yeah. it? Dude, we've been talking about it for the last hour and a half. Oh, well, you know, I have to listen to other stations and crap. Listen to our station. You work for AF, you idiot. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are they reporting? What's the latest? Anyway, they, they're saying that he was in a multi-car accident, and there was uh, tractor trailers involved, yeah. some, something about a bridge. I, I didn't quite hear it all. Well, someone uh, just called in and said uh, that the car was struck by lightning. That's completely ridiculous. I didn't hear that. All right. Well, you know, that's all I heard. I'm, I just try to be uh, reporting the news as I heard it. All right, brother. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, it, it, ju it just gets more and more real with every call and every time uh, now, we, we spoke about it. it. It sounded believable. And the other thing we got to tell people when we were doing this uh, prank last year, we had a, uh, a secondary prank for people yeah. to suck onto, and that was that Pearl Jam was breaking up. Yeah. So we were announcing that during our entire show. Uh -huh. And then we finally uh, got a, a call from a guy going, hey, man, is that whole Pearl Jam breakup an April Fool's joke? And we're like, well, yeah. All right, you got us. You like, got that us. was our April Fool's game. You're right. It and was the decoy. Yeah, and then he's like, well, what about the mayor? No, we wouldn't joke about uh, something like that. Of course, that would be horrible. We're not that demented, you know? So that added to it. Yeah. Well, now what I'm doing is i got to find really fast here. This is what... Uh, what got everyone believing that the mayor of... Uh, oh, the uh, the news reporter. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the, <laughs> and this guy is a, a personal friend of the show. Yeah. He uh, does a radio show. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to hate me, but... Uh, in our listening area. Yeah. And he never... We, we never turned him in on this one. No. <laughs> we took it like men. Yeah. Never revealing his name. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? I think he... Uh, he might be safe because I can't cue it up. <laughs> oh, come on. You got to right. get it. All right, I'll stall here. You got to get it. You might have to take a break. So but he's got the whole voice and everything, and he was uh, playing the part of a reporter. Right. Down in Florida, and he gave the details. It was, and it was too real. Correct. But there were a couple of goofy things in that report, too, that kind of we thought would let people know that it was kind of a joke, but I don't know. All right, I think I got it. All right. So, yes, we got this uh, fake reporter on the line from Jacksonville, Florida, where supposedly the accident uh, occurred. Have it. Dude, we got Roger on the line, finally. All right. From Jacksonville. From Jacksonville, Florida, where the uh, Mayor Menino crash happened. He's from, uh, Kevin's handing me this, WNWZ News in Jacksonville. Roger! Yes. It's Opie and Anthony from WAF in Boston. We got you live on the air. We're trying to get the latest on the Mayor Menino crash. Yes, gentlemen. Uh, I have de some details for you. I've been uh, putting them together uh, here in the NWZ newsroom. Uh, mayor Menino, that's your mayor? Yes, Menino? yes Boston. He was uh, traveling north on uh, I-95, which I'm sure some of your uh, listeners are familiar with. Um, on his way to Jacksonville, it appears, to the airport. He did have uh, luggage in the car. Um, in his Lincoln Town car, and he had a head-on collision uh, with a, a tractor trailer. I'm set oh, to report. Uh, it, it only happened, uh, say, within the last 60 to 90 minutes. So I don't have uh, many details, but it uh, was a Lincoln Town car. Uh, a female companion, uh, maybe of Cuban descent, unsure of the age, uh, but somewhat young, uh, also in the car. Uh, there's no word on her condition, but the mayor um, has been. Uh, pronounced dead uh, at the scene. Wow. So we have a uh, rather grim situation down here. Um, and that's uh, just about all the details we have. There's no, no, uh, no, no like, cause of the crash or anything? Any info on that? You know, you know it, it's really hard to tell, but it appears that the tractor trailer uh, crossed the median and uh, basically became airborne. Wow. Uh, and went into the other lanes and landed head on, basically. Well, we're also hearing rumors that there is lightning involved, but. I, I don't. We did have lightning. I don't know if that was part of the crash. Uh, it may have been. I, 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 as far as I can tell from the scene, though, it, it seems the tractor trailer jumped the median and uh, w crashed head onto the mayor's wrong car. Wrong place at the wrong time. Wow. All right, there you have it. Roger Grimsley from Jacksonville, Florida. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Roger. And there he goes. Wow. <laughs> Roger Grimsley. Come on. I mean, it's. Uh, 
He's like, grim news here. It's Roger Grimsley, Grimsley. for the, the what, WN... WZ. WZ. Oh, it's, it's news. That's like one of the cartoon news stations that it would be. Right. And then we were just flooded. I mean, absolutely flooded. With phone calls like uh, like this one. Check this yeah. out. Yes, could you tell me if that report of Menino's death is true or not? Well, we can't really confirm it at this time. Uh, we're going to have uh, more info in a few minutes, actually. Well, what was that report you had a while ago? You said it was from Jacksonville. Wasn't that a confirmation? Uh, yeah, Jacksonville. The, the story goes Mayor Menino was in a car crash head-on with a tractor trailer. Well, City Hall won't confirm it. Well, why would they? Why would they confirm it? Why wouldn't they if it was true? It Neither would, will be or WRKO or any of the other stations. It would put the whole damn city in a in a frenzy. Then why are you reporting it? Because we don't give a you know what. I just hope you're not playing a sick joke on the city. On the whole entire city? Yeah. My God, that well, would be I, crazy. Uh, Mayor is very important to you, I guess. Yes, he is. And if this is a joke, this is sick. Okay. Well, we're good. We're going to get uh, the latest report in a few minutes, so you keep listening, okay? Yeah. All right. Whew. Tough day here. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I really started getting a little worried, because now I'm realizing that there's people listening that are really pissed and upset and, and wanting to get to the bottom of this, and when they do, they are just going to be livid. Yeah. That was just the tip, tip, tip of the iceberg, oh, that one. without a doubt. And the funny thing is, our listeners knew... That it was all a joke. Right. It was the people that might have accidentally tuned in. Right. Well, or... it was like word of mouth. You know, all of a sudden someone said to someone else, and yeah. all of a sudden it just got blown out of proportion. They start calling the mayor's office, and it just snowballed from there. Yeah. And you could hear us almost backpedaling on that one, like trying to salvage something, because he's like, uh, you know, well, well, what was the story you told before? Well, it's not a confirmation. <laughs> I'm trying to confirm. What do you mean? <laughs> It was just total backpedaling, but at that point, it was too late. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we were constructing mm -hmm. our demise yeah. right there, and yeah. there was no turning back. No, at that point, we're like, you know, we might as well go for broke. That's it. We're not going to be pussies and try to, you know, weasel, weasel our way out at this point. You are listening to the end of an employment <laughs> right here. <laughs> this is the reason of a firing. And, you know, we, we didn't take it uh, well. Because we really enjoyed uh, what we built up there. But, we're, yeah. I mean, we're glad to be home now doing it here. But uh, I mean, it would be one thing if we were uh, last place in the ratings and uh, we got fired. It wouldn't even be newsworthy. Wouldn't care. Who cares? Yeah. But I, we, we, we got to convey, we were the number one radio show. And by far. I mean, yeah. by far, there was no one even close. We had, like, those ridiculous stern numbers in the afternoon. Yeah. It was crazy. It was so fun. when when this happened, we figured we were invincible. Right. There was no way they were going to fire us for this. Right. So let her rip. Keep going. <laughs> Ooh, insert foot in mouth. <laughs> All right. So if you find this interesting, we're going to wrap it up next. Uh, 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 we got plenty of great stuff left. Yeah. I mean, I want to play. Uh, I got to thank Mark, Mark Francis. He spent the last two hours uh, yeah. because I have a VHS tape of, I don't know, how many newscasts, Mark, if you had a guess, like 20 or 30? At least, yeah. At least yeah. 20 or 30 newscasts about our April Fool's prank. I mean, this thing went national. And it lasted oh, for about a week. Of the thing. Yeah, yeah it amazing. just went on and on. And, and Mark put a little collage together of all the news reports talking about us, and it's hysterical. Cool. It's absolutely hysterical. I love the little liners. Like, instead of delivering gags now, they'll be uh, delivering audition tapes. Audition tapes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the, all the anchormen had to get their funny little yeah. little quips in. Well, because the rest of the media in Boston absolutely hated us. Yeah. And they just wanted us, uh, they just wanted something bad to happen to us. Out of there. And They're they very had, conservative. They had, down. Oh, they yeah. had a party when we finally got fired. All the radio stations, TV, the print, um, they just had a field day with this. Yeah, mayor. They said the mayor was dead as a joke. Now the joke's on them. Their career is dead. Right. And as you guys are, uh, are finding out slowly here, you know, this whole Whip Em Out Wednesday thing was a huge promotion for us when we started that two years ago. Um, when we got fired, we were on the front page of all the papers up there, and they did a little twist with the, the headline, Opie and Anthony wiped out on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, wiped out on Wednesday, because we actually did get fired on, on, a on a Wednesday, a week later. So they said, wiped out on Wednesday. Wow. <laughs> hey, oh, that's clever. That was good. <laughs> all right, so plenty of great audio on the way. Yeah. Uh, please stick around if you find this uh, interesting, because uh, it, it's pretty cool. All right?
Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, people are like, please don't play tunes. Don't play tunes. Don't play tunes. Don't play tunes. All right, we won't play tunes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's Opie and Anthony on yeah. WNEW, the rock of New York. Thanks. Reliving our nightmare of a year ago. Yeah, thanks for bearing with us. It's just a tough day for us. It really is. Yeah, <laughs> kind of remember, uh, remembering it well with all the sound clips. All right, so uh, I got more tape here. Okay. Um, our April 1st of last year, April Fool's Day prank, uh, saying Mayor Tom Menino of Boston was dead. Right. And for some reason, this thing just doesn't want to cooperate today. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> Come on. Okay. All right. Do, 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 do. All right, it's queuing up here. Mm -hmm. Some more audio from last year's April Fool's prank right here on N.E.W. There it goes. Hey, phones are going nuts. Everyone's got a comment about uh, the Mayor Menino thing. Yeah. Want to go to the phones? If you want to talk, give us a call. 931-1AF. AF. Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, man. Channel 4 just had it on the news that you guys are lying about Mayor Menino. I said on the TV that AF is um, giving out a false statement about Mayor Menino. He's not, he's not dead. He's still alive. Get out of here. They wrote it's an April Fool's joke. It was on, like, you know how they do the lottery numbers? Yeah. It went across the screen like that. Get out! Yeah. Are you kidding? No. You're lying. I'm not at all. You're dude, lying. You're, you're I'm not lying, dude. I, my mother just had on the TV, and it, she just told me, because I told it when you guys said it, he was dead. She just told me that they had it on the news that you guys were lying. <laughs> Come on. I swear to God, I'm not lying. Dude. It was scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Yeah. It said that AAS is giving out a false statement about the death of Mayor Menino. Dude, dude, you guys are causing an uproar in the city. Everybody's going nuts thinking he's dead. You guys are the shit, dude. I love you guys. Come on! That is the best joke, dude. They were showing the lottery yeah. numbers and then they scrolled across yeah. the bottom of the screen? Yeah, yeah. Dude, guess what we did to my teacher today? And Got gotcha again, dude. AF. Yeah, hi. I just want to let you guys know that Opie and Anthony are the only two people that ever play an April Fool's joke on me. Really? Yes. No one can ever get me, and I believe in this. Um, May and Menino was killed. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I swear to God, I went home. <laughs> Listen, I was riding in the car, picking up my brother. Yeah. And I'm coming home. Oh, yeah. And the both of us like, oh my God, he died. Oh. <laughs> I go home and I turn on New England cable news, and I'm waiting for it, and waiting for it to be on the news. Right, right, right. Oh, I felt like such a fool. So I just wanted to let you guys know. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, thanks. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Come on. Let's all go to Larky's and have a beer today. Yeah, what do you say? I'm gonna go to <laughs> oh, my God. So, I mean, this thing got so huge that uh, the news stations had to say something. Yeah. Because the mayor's office was getting flooded with phone calls and and all the other stations. And so they, they, they were scrolling across the bottom of the screen that what you heard on, on uh, you know, the, the, the radio was an April Fool's prank by Opie and Anthony. April Fool's guy. And what made it worse, we found out later, was that... Uh, the mayor who was vacationing in Florida was on a flight back to uh, to Boston when we said this. So no one could get in touch with him. Correct. <laughs> Which made it even worse. Yeah. I mean, no one could get in touch with the guy. Yeah. He was in the air. Now, at this point, uh, Ant and I were pretty scared because now we're like, ah, oh, the TV's got a hold of this. I mean, we're in we're in deep ass. Yeah. But we're like, what the hell? We'll just play it cool on the air and stuff and just oh. ride it out and see what happens, you know? See what happens. But uh, I think I got the the final break that we did in Boston. All right. It's queuing up here. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, a nightmare. I think I can get this up here. All right, here we go. AF. Okay, here's the question I have. A friend of mine calls. This is the Mayor Tom Menino was killed in a car accident. And I'm thinking to myself that only someone like Opie and Anthony would try pulling a stunt like that. On April Fool's Day. Now, what's the deal? Do you guys? <laughs> no one else came to mind, huh? No, no, no. You were absolutely the first person that came to mind. <laughs> you sure it wasn't anyone else? Yeah, maybe another wacky disc no. jockey could have pulled that one. No, I don't think so. Not one other DJ came to mind with a sick, twisted sense of humor like that, huh? Not one other person in the whole state came to mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're the culprits. We're the culprits. <laughs> yeah. But he's okay, yeah? Uh, I guess. Good as he's ever been. Yeah. <laughs> if okay is okay. All right. I wouldn't call him okay, but he's, he's still breathing. He's still, there we go. All, All right. right. All right, man. Thanks. Thank you.
<laughs> These phones are like lit, bro. Wow, I'm getting some email too. What does the email say? Yeesh. From a former listener. <laughs> oh, no. I'm disappointed with you two. Why? Of all the April Fool's jokes you could have pulled, pulled, you had to pick probably one of the most tasteless types of joke. The death of anyone isn't a funny thing. In any form, no matter how you look at it. I know no one died for real, and I have a good a sense of humor as the next guy. Yeah, right. But I also have good taste. And what you two did today was just completely stupid. Do you think for more than two minutes before you do something like this? I know everything is usually all fun and games in AAF land, but this time you really effed up. To prove that you, to prove to you that I have a good sense of humor, I think everything you guys have done on and off the radio up till now was the funniest stuff I ever heard. But I have to draw the line somewhere. And joking about someone's death, much less the mayor, is where I draw the line. I hope you guys regret what you have done, even just a little bit after you think about it for a few minutes, which is perhaps what you should have done before. Signed. Uh, Dave Douglas, our program director. <laughs> wow. No, uh, signed a former listener. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Uh, uh, I want to take another call. They're ringing like crazy. Yeah. AF. Yes, I called earlier to ask about the Menino hoax. Yes. I just want to let you people know, I think you're the lowest, most disgusting people I've ever heard. And I hope someday your family is hurt the way you've hurt a lot of people today. Um... Okay, thanks. Yeah, goodbye. Uh, all right. Um, thank you. <laughs> Uh-oh. Starting to get a little ugly here. Dude, I, I think we may have uh, effed up today. You think? <laughs> <laughs> Understatement of the century right there. Dude, I think we may have effed up. That was pretty much uh, the last break that we, was it. we ever did in Boston. There was bye a... bye Bean Town. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. We we have hours of audio. I, I, we don't really want to bore you guys with it, but I figured I th that, that's some of the highlights. I mean, that pretty much sums up the whole way it started, the middle, and the end. See, toward the end, you could tell. I think we we know at that point that we really kind of did something that is going to uh, linger for a while. It's not one of those that it's going to be, ah, we'll blow it off the next day we're on the air and yeah. everything's hunky-dory. You also got to uh, keep in mind, we were suspended three times prior to this prank. Yeah. And we're like, ah, we'll just get another suspension. And when we got suspended, it was always great because we got, like, free vacation. We played golf for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But this time was a little different. <laughs> Yeah, and people weren't. People got to the point where they didn't believe that we were suspended. They thought it was some kind of wacky radio prank because nobody gets suspended th that much. As much as we did. But we just kept getting suspended because th these groups would put pressure on our uh, bosses. And they had who had no spine. None. So they, uh, they would suspend us. Yes. So they could show, see, we have them under control. We Don't got, worry about we it. We got suspended for Whip Em Out Wednesday for two weeks. Yeah. And you heard our, uh, our new boss here, Scott Herman, the yeah. big boss man. Uh, he's in, he's supporting it. Yeah. We just never had that at our last station. Yeah. You know? So we had to, uh, pull that one out of our hats and, uh, <laughs> that was it. We were escorted to the Connecticut state line and asked never to return. <laughs> yeah. And that's why we decided not to do an April Fool's prank this year. Cause we can't beat that. No. You know, we'll let, uh, Stuttering John and all the other play dope, dopes ABBA out, songs. Dopes out there do the stupid pranks. Stuttering Look, John. It's K Rock, but they're playing an old 70s disco songs. <laughs> Oh, that's wax ain't horrific. That's what Stuttering John did today. Cute, cute little prank you had there, Johnny. Yeah, boy, that, they'll be talking for weeks, years about that one. I don't know. Do you want to? I mean, Mark spent uh, like three, four hours on this, so <laughs> we really got to play it. Oh, you got to play this.